Yes, welcome to Moving Forward. This is episode four, right? This is the show where we examine the Trinidad and Tobago music industry. And we try to find a way for it to properly move forward, right? But you know, as Black Stalin say, if we don't know from where we're coming, then we can't plan where we're going. So we will examine the past first, right? And we will reflect on our victories and the mistakes we've made. And so I'm Robin Foster and I do this podcast along with Mario Russell, DJ Dongtong Outlaws. And um, today we have a special guest for you. Um, we have Robin Imamsha. He's a musician, arranger, producer, song engineer, writer. And most recently, he's an educator teaching music tech at the University of Trinidad and Tobago. Robin has 50 years in the business, started as a teenager, and now he's grandfather age. So, right, so let's um, welcome him now. Robin, how are you going? Make him feel good, then. Eh? <laughs> yeah, boy, Robin, nice. boy. Um, <laughs> Right, so um, usually in this Mario, show, I just, Mario, 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 yeah, I just let Mario does always open the bowling in this show, right? So, <laughs> let, so Mario, go through hard. Okay, Robin, you know, um, for those of who don't know your history, we like to know your history. I know your history long and interesting, so I look forward to hearing some of the things like from when you start, where you start, your love for music, um, if you start as a child. If you learn to play the guitar as a child, things like that now. I mean, we really want to hear a lot about you um, and because you're, you're such an interesting person and you made such a big contribution to the music industry in Trinidad. And right. And we want people to know. Mm-hmm. And you know, usually people in Trinidad tend to more know artists than the people behind the scenes now. You know, I know, I know you was in front of the scenes, but it was more behind the scenes. Yeah. So we want to know about, we want to educate the, the, the country about you. So um, who is Robin you know, Imam Shah? Robin Imam Shah, mm-hmm. uh, from Tulapuna. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we born and raised in Tulapuna, actually. You know, but born in Port of Spain. You know, most people born in Port of Spain. And then, you know, in the hospital or whatever, right? Um... Started music. Hmm. Music has always been. You're hearing me properly there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, it's always been unintended circumstances with me eh, because I, um, as a kid, I was I, I into a lot of electronics and, you know, this, uh, as a boy, you know. But uh, and I wanted. Wow. Something went on with this now. No, no, no. Don't worry about that. They go. <laughs> uh, Robin, let me ask a question. Did this, this, would this be edited or anything? Well, we may, we may do some small edits and just put on credits. Uh, but, no, but, but most of the time, it will be just, it will be switched. Straight up. Okay. Straight up okay. switched. All right? Like, I'm going to you now. <clears throat> right. Right. Mm-hmm. So then, so what used to happen, basically, was with me, it was, I wanted stuff. Like, I wanted to get a skeletric set. <laughs> as a little kid, right? Mm-hmm. And the old lady and my old man just say that 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 too expensive was nearly it was like four hundred dollars at the time and that is way back when, eh? Whoa. Yeah. That was a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Could have bought a second hand car without that type of money. Yes, mm-hmm. true. Uh, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And 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 they say no way I ain't getting that. And they uh, and they and they, and and my mother dragged me Head over heels downtown into Port of Spain on Frederick Street to start home and buy me a twenty-five dollar guitar. <laughs> right, this is, this is my eleventh birthday. Eh? Boys, boy. uh, every yeah. every everybody in the business get a um, <laughs> get a twenty-five dollar <laughs> guitar. Even all them big stars. Right, right. My mother went to Woolworth okay. and bought me a ten dollar guitar. You know, correct, correct, correct. And here's the irony of it all, eh? Mm-hmm. The man who um, attended to my mother and I was Cliff Harris. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> he is the one that was the, he was the uh, he was a, a, a sales person there, right? Right, yeah. And he um and he was there and he was big in the party. Cliff Harris had his own band he's from Grandy. Yeah, had his own band and thing, right? Mm-hmm. But he used to sell as as his main job. And he was playing this big arm on um, keyboard in the middle of the store. 
and then he didn't want to be disturbed you know when Mora come and listen I want to buy a guitar from this one right and he bought me this guitar right with um and a 60 cents um I I bought the guitar from him with a 60 cents um chord music book how to play guitar right right a chord now, book and that that is a little book a little, a little like a like a little pamphlet you right, know it's got right. about 10 pages in it right you know mm. tf and g chords and all this kind of thing and I was so upset with this thing, boy. First of all, I didn't want to get that one muscular to say. Second of all, Cliff just could not have the time of day for me. He, you know, he, it, 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 was a, it was a time in his life where he was big, you know? Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> Music and things like that. And so, 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 I, ironically, I mean, Cliff ended up being the, the road manager for, for Chandler, you know? Mm-hmm. But look at how many years later, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, that was 11 years old, I was doing that, and I got the guitar, and I started to play it, you know, like, you know, every now and then, I'll pick it up, because just out of a bad mind and things, and, and, and so I started um, playing music, that was how it started with me, right? And I learned, I learned uh, all the, um, oh God, this could be real long, you know, guys, you want all of this? We want all, that is why we're doing podcasts, because we are no, we are no restriction, we want the history. Right, you are educator. When we, when we, when somebody mm-hmm. be searching Trinidad music, they must pull this and watch it and say, right, mm-hmm. that is what happened. You know what I mean? All right, all right. So, well, um, I built a tree house. I tell you, it's a tech stuff on this. So I built a tree house on the almond tree in the front of my house on Eastern Main Road. I used to live at one hundred and twenty-six Eastern Main Road, Tunapuna. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, uh, I built it your house and I built it your specifically to go up inside that house and play this guitar because I'm starting to sing the songs I hear on the radio and things and I'm singing and such a shit and I don't want nobody to hear the bad notes I'm playing and all this kind of thing. Right? So that is where I used to go up in the tree house. Mm-hmm. And then, again, then um, uh, as years went by, the tree house became many different things. A sanctuary where you could go and smoke without your father getting in trouble, <laughs> right? Or, or take a girlfriend up and get you food to eat and whatever, right. you know. Yeah. But that's what the tree house was. And in that tree house is where I started. Uh, I used to play, I don't know if you all know, boy, but on the you know, station in Toronto, many, many years ago, eh? when I was a kid, you didn't have any uh, local music on the radio, right? It was always... And there was a phase, like there was a Latin phase in Toronto and Tobago where right. there was only Latin, right? And all the charts, mm-hmm. uh, Robin, you might know, or even Mario, mm-hmm. but the charts had only Latin music, like Hugo Blanco and all these kind of uh, names, right? My mother used to buy all these records, and there was a big Latin phase that was going on in Trinidad. Right. But no, no, um, no other music, right? And then it changed to where they, where, where, where they started to get um, uh, 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 Benny Goodman, right? right. Uh, and Jazz style, right? Big band. And, right. Mm-hmm. Band era, right? right. And, 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 and this is what was playing on the radio. And then, lo and behold, boy, the record shop opposite us. We used to have a gas station opposite us in Tunapuna and a little record shop between a small barber shop and the gas station was a record shop. Mm. And in that record shop, you're starting to hear R&B and, I uh, know, uh, uh, like Motown, you know? Mm-hmm. But that was, you know, to, to, in Trinidad and, and in the world, that was like, that was like underground music, you know? That's like how, you know, uh, rockers and, uh, and dancehall and things that had come into Trinidad, you know? It was, a, it was it, you can't, you could you only could get records and you record a funny label, all this kind of thing. <laughs> and I hear in this R and B, I love this music, boy. You know. So it wasn't so we, playing on the radio at all, right? It can't play on the radio. It wouldn't play. Uh-huh. And, 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 and it had that thing about it, it. It was about there was a there was a. I'm, I'm not going to say this, and I'll cost me what it will. Say, be want man. A kind of racism in it, you know, because it was black music, mm-hmm. right? It, 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 like it, somehow it didn't play on Trinidad radio. Strange as I was telling you, there, right? Because you programming in Trinidad radio, we used to come from the big, like Warner Brothers, all the big, 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 big um, 
on, on CBS and all the big companies. Mm-hmm. The music, right, w- w- was following a trend that used to go on in the United States. And black music in the United States never used to play on mainstream radio. You know? Well, yeah, yeah. It used to play on black radio. You used to play black radio. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, like when Laundry come out of this radio station or whoever before, that, that, that was like an underground radio station where young people want to hear stuff, yeah? Right, yeah. So that, this, this is the same thing, you know? But you know, funny enough, David Rudder was saying, right, that um, David Rudder was saying that he kind of credit that um, a lot for his development because we used to hear a lot of different music. In, from from listening on the radio, you know, you used to hear all them Latin and classical and this and that, and he, yeah. you know, he get a full sense of music um, from yeah, that. But, 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 but everybody, me, me, uh, of course. I mean, I, I I grew up on hearing all this Latin music. If I mean, the first song I played on the guitar was some kind of Latin song, mm-hmm. you know, because ding 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 ding, you know, I, I, it was always some sort of cha 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 or samba or some kind of Thing like that, you know, on the parents who, you know, you know I mean, they, that's the music they used to dance to and all this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But the, well, as you start to get into the, the, uh, the, the, as the years start to roll by, right, things start to change. There's a sort of um, uh, enlightenment coming, you know, and, and people starting to realize, you know, the house. Other music, other than the big bands and and the Hugo Blanco, that young people are saying things and in Trinidad, that young people turn into Motong and and Stax records and stuff like that, which was massive in Trinidad underground and Bocatini MGs and all these kind of massive big music and that's what I was playing. Uh-huh. That is my gig that month, you know. I, I, should I go on? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. go ahead. All right. So when you get into um when you first think that you was good enough to be in a band or have a band, when did that happen? Uh, that, that 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 that's the strangest thing, right? I am going ahead. Let, let's stay in this mode now. This is nice. I can I can see you all are talking, you know. Right. Yeah. When, yeah. when you put me up there by myself, I feel like I am fun. Oh, <laughs> so you you want to see all, us all the time then? Yeah, but we want to see you, but it's all right. Okay, well, go ahead now. But you're not seeing me, you know. Yeah, seeing, seeing you, yeah, but yeah, yeah. but you is oh. who you is who we feature in. We, oh, we feature in you today. Okay. All right, no, no problem. I will keep it. All right. Look, look, look. You oh, could so, you so, could so, see me and Mario. You could see right, you could right, see you right, could right. see me and you. You could see you and Mario. You could see all three. See all tree, see all tree. Like see all tree. tree, all right. All tree, yeah. All right. So, so you know, what, 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 um, what was the question, uh, Robin? Yeah, I then? wanted to know when, when did you think that, um, you was good enough or you decided to make a kind of career in music? When, when did that happen? Okay, a couple of things happened there. One, one, I stopped listening to the radio at a point in time because, them people on the radio stations not give me music I like. So I used to live in the record shop and start buying records one by one and then loaning them records. What's right? the first record on you ever buy? I'm curious. Um, of course, I'm going to tell you. Um, uh, um, Supreme. Baby love, baby, baby love. love. Eh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't remember that. Yeah, one. yeah, of course. Oh, okay. I can't forget that one. Diana Ross. Mm-hmm. That, well, Diana Ross and the Supremes. So it was the Supremes at the time, right? Mm-hmm. They had no Diana Ross was that thing, right? She was still with um, Barry Gordy. Uh, <laughs> but uh, and, <laughs> don't, and, don't, don't talk the business now. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Why are your business? <laughs> right, right, right. So, 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 but, uh, that and, uh, and then, um, uh, 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 um, um, Isaac King, you right. know, and that's a little on, you know, mm-hmm. so, yeah, 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 I don't even know Carl Beaver Henderson. Carl Beaver Henderson. The, the, the last show we did before you was Carl Beaver Henderson. 
Oh, I thought he was going to be on this show. No, 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 no but, man. We had to go in depth into right. everybody, man. Guy living in Tunapuna, right? Mm-hmm. On the Eastern Main Road. Diva, father, is a, is a, a Professor Tom Henderson mm-hmm. in New York. So he living in, in New York quarters. This is a fantastic big house and thing, right? And he living in St. Augustine. So in school, in Form 4, this fella set up and 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 and, and call, he, the teacher name is Bali, Mr. Bali. And uh, all I heard was yeah, Mr. Bali. Uh, it, it, it's a thick American accent. I believe what talking, you know. Right? <laughs> so I tell him, Mr. <laughs> when his man come up from I start to laugh one day, you know. So after I asked him where he probably start, I'm at him then and he said, Well, you living up your and And he says play keyboards and things, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, I go up the road, uh, I meet him one thing, and we started playing the piano. And then I realized that Biva went to school in Wisconsin, Wisconsin in, 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 um, in the state. So he exposed all the uh, the black music and thing, huh? mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And 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 so that jamming start. Now, men come on when they hear us playing and thing, right? Men come in, come to me, um, Bobby Kwan. Would you believe this? Yeah, yeah. From Blue Ventures, right? Mm-hmm. Bobby Kwan come to me and asked me to join his band, Blue Ventures, right? And I, this is Bobby Kwan from Tunapuna, you know, he's a boy just like me. Mm-hmm. And I, um, I, 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 that's the first one I asked him. And when I hear the music they're playing, all these Latin whole things. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I don't want to play, I, I want to play, so I didn't play it. I, I, I blank him, right? <laughs> Then come to check, check Beaver too, Beaver. But Beaver, into, we into Meters. Robin, there was a band called Meters. But I, Meters is one of my favorite bands of all times. I am a, I am oh, the ultimate oh, Meters oh, fan. Look at Pie Pie. Ah, look at Pie Pie and um, pie pie. Sissy Strut and, and, and all them things, yeah. They that, fuck away. And, and right, I, yeah. So, I, we dig it up in Meters, but oh God, Meters are called over. Me and Beaver playing. Oh gosh. <laughs> do, 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 do. Right? A slow do, 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 and, and, right. and, 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 and um, how do you call it? And, and, the, and the term school concert in St. Mary's College, right? Mm-hmm. And every year, the, all kind of classical music, the choir singing, all kind of thing. And the school band is me and Beaver, right? And I've got called Strips, right? <laughs> and we go on stage and we... <laughs> and the whole place gone mad, right? Mm-hmm. And all of us in the prison are saying, what in heaven's name is going on here? You remember? <laughs> so really called, really called white, a white college, you know what I mean? Mm. So we did it we did, we did playing Cordova and, and, and Sissy shot, right? Yeah. Real, real, real uh, backbeat music, right? Mm. And this is where the things start, right? Mm-hmm. But that's us, eh? In the meantime, in Port of Spain, because this is in the East, right? We are basically, Biva and I, Carl Jacobs, all of us are really East boys, eh? Mm-hmm. Carl is up until I am um, Tulapuna, Biva, St. Augustine. We more or less East, East music, right? East of the Lighthouse. <laughs> east of the Lighthouse, right? <laughs> all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, right? <laughs> and, uh, and the Port of Spain crew would be men like Casanova, Monty Williams, the fellas, mm-hmm. badass musicians, right? And they different. They are on a different head. And I don't know if there's an album that they brought out um, called Reboot, Casanova's Reboot, mm-hmm. right? Uh, it's a kind of drawing of them on the, on the cover. And in that album, you started to see the change in music in Trinidad and Tobago. Because they have the old-time classic Latin thing, mm-hmm. bebop and all kind right. of shit, right? And two songs on it... Um, Stand by Sir Andy Family Stone right. and sing a simple song by Sir Andy Family Stone. Where the scri- that album, you know. Where the scribing day is the is the um the combo era. The beginning combo. of the combo era, okay. Right. So we Viva and I were at the end of the combo era. All right. right? Because mm-hmm. because before us they had all these bands, Del Tones and Casanovas and Group Solo and all of these different ones, right? Mm-hmm. They they that, that was the combo. combo yeah, era. Deltones. Waggy used to live in the back of me here. Waggy, Waggy the oh, drummer, Waggy. right? Yeah. God rest his soul, he's dead now. Yeah, he Waggy. died, he died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but, so, Waggy, I thought Waggy was an East Boy, no? No, Waggy from right in Belmont, right where we are talking to you from, right in the back. 
over the wall, ah, in, in, yes, over yes, my yes, back yes, wall, yes, Wagi was from yes, in the yard. Yes, yes, Wagi, yes, Wagi yes, yes, younger yes, brother was yes, my best yes, friend yes, in school, in primary school. And Wagi used to make clothes, he could have real so he used to make clothes for all of us. And oh, boy. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When Carly and I, when we were living in Florida, we used to go by Wagi to get all the clothes, make used to make face on your pants and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Job, eh? Wagi ended up sewing for Utwin and Fire and, 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 and oh, Isley man. Brothers and all kind of thing. Yeah, yeah Wagi, yeah. Serious, man. But that era, the change that happened, right? Mm -hmm. And the change happened because the East-West corridor is a hell of a thing, right? So mm -hmm. the West is all the cultural capital, right? Where um, Belmont, uh, uh, Woodbrook, that is, that is real, real, Music men who do music on piano and all kind of that, the piano teacher and all kind of the east side of the of the of the corridor is more self-taught people. People like like um uh, like Carl and myself. You know, we had a we, we read book and you know and, uh, so we don't follow anything, right? Hmm. We hear music and we like that. We play in that. <laughs> so that's how we used to do it. So that so that 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 ended up with us actually forming our own band. We and I formed our own band because we can't find nobody to play with. We didn't like what they're playing, so we're gonna play your own thing. So mm -hmm. this is Last Supper. All right. That was that was when I formed Last Supper. And Last Supper was What year, what year, you remember? It had to be in the sixties because we were still in school. So I was okay. in school in nineteen seventy one. So Last Supper formed when we was in form three. Ah. In college. Okay. That's early. Form, form three. <laughs> that was, yeah. Wow. We, um, we used to play in a place called the White Elephant up, up in Kayana. Yeah, right? White Elephant, the Scotek up the hill. Yeah, all right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah right. While you were still going to school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that was <laughs> the big problem. Be, 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 be my father, nearly kill him. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember Carl Tom and this, he was supposed to be some kind of doctor or something, you know. Yeah, he had all these studies and passes to do it and things. Yeah, yeah. And he just wanted to tell his father, I ain't doing that, you know, I'm going to play music. His father, but you know, <laughs> that was You know, you had to hide him and thing. you had to hide the one thing, you know. Because when you see this, when Tom and him looking for his son, <laughs> right? You know, he bringing out all, 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 all the police, the special police is having um, in UE. Yeah. Looking for people. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's not, it's not normal police then. Hmm. Right? <laughs> The only way, the only way he get away, no matter was national security with William at the time. So, so, so she kind of tell him to cool himself before by me. And that, 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 that's a that 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 sideline story. Right, right, yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, but, 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 uh, the, 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 the change happened with, with, with Last of All in the sense that we used to work, we never used to play nobody music unless you like it. And you only and you write our own music and play in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the club, right? And I did um I didn't know a fellow called Frankie Atwell. Yeah, Frankie yeah. Atwell, yeah. Producer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Winifred Atwell, brother. Arranger. Oh, pianist. He was brother. Winifred Atwell, brother? Brother. I, I never know that. Hmm. I never Frank, know yeah. that. And you see, again yeah. educated here. Yeah. I know, I know about Frankie Atwell. He was a popular kind of songwriter and producer kind of guy back in the seventies, right? But I never associated him with with Winifred Atwell. That's a, that was his claim to fame. That's how he got into all the advertising agencies and they, oh, you know, okay. in the business that be in, right? Mm -hmm. you, know, you, have mm -hmm. to, you have to have some sort of luck before they get into the to, to, to be able to get in. You can't just come in just to go out of be down plenty door, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So Frankie Atwell, Frankie Atwell was there. In fact, I don't come to, come to um, uh, how do you call it, uh, uh, White Elephant and Hairs playing and hire us to do a, a jingle for Karim. He, write, he, he wrote the jingle, right? Uh, he just like the voice and all the bandits and all the he wanted it. You remember how it went? Yeah, man. In this country. In, in Carib country. country. In, 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 a a bit Okay. There's a car. Well, that was it? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. That's good, good, man. Right. You do that. Mm -hmm. I'm, Robin, I'm sure you had something to do with it. I had nothing to do with that. I was still in school when that was out. Right? Oh, all, yeah. all, I tell you, Ole was big man and I was a little boy. <laughs> I was friends with, 
with Joffrey, who is Beaver brother. We were in class together in QRC. And I you I went home there and Beaver was a big brother, big man walking and going thing. We was little boys. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, I come into advertising or kind of thing years later. Yeah, we end up doing that song mm -hmm. and single, right? And the the, the, the pay that we he wanted to pay us, mm. and, we, and we say now, nah, right? If you could pay for recording time for us, right? okay, all right. In TV studios, right? And that's how I write to that boogie. Give me something. Okay. <laughs> so, that, so that was your first recording, Trinidad Boogie. Yeah. Official. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of Trinidad Boogie, then the next one was uh, a Trinidad Boogie had a flip side. I can't remember it. Yeah. Oh, the flip side of Trinidad Boogie was a, a disco hose. You saw what thing called a disco hose or not, right? Yeah. So they remove all the break and all of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? So that, that had that version. The second one was Black Ball. And, um, Mm -hmm. Come with me, that is it. you know. That is a, but but Trinidad Boogie cause the, if you listen, if it, the words of Trinidad Boogie was exactly what young people was looking for at the time. The words say it all. Like, give me something from my homeland. Mm -hmm. Give me something to wave my hand. Right? I had no I had no words so yet, you know. You mm know, -hmm. it's just it was just mm -hmm. um, how you call it? Just just looking for something, right? Because mm -hmm. I had heard a song called NASA. NASA's gone funky. Funky, funky NASA. Yeah, jump ding ding ding. Right. Funky NASA, right? And I understand that that's some Trinidadians that play horns on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. That was a very popular song, boy. Funky yeah, NASA. Trinidadians play a lot of in the music in the, world, in the Caribbean, you know. Mm -hmm. That's Funky NASA Trinidadian horn. In Ska. Is uh, is um God Tate Tate guitarist from Trinidad. Nolan Nolan Tate. Lin, they call him Lin Tate, right? That that that, that thing. Chink, chink, right, chink, right, chink. yeah. Uh, um, from, from him, I know the man well. Rock steady. Rock steady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. have play a big part in the music. So 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 so. And it was all it was all when I was a young young younger man, uh, boy. I I I would hear. In Barbados, they always say the best musicians come from Toronto. They go. They always say that, you know. Jamaicans say the same thing. Because Trinidad always had great, great musicians. We didn't have good recordings. Mm -hmm. Our recorders, because we didn't have that kind of industry yet. So, like, I, where you record that jingle and thing by Cage? By Cage, yeah. And I, the... I went by Cage and I meet Kerry. Kerry, Kerry, mm -hmm. Kerry Richards. I don't even know who. Kerry Richards, Richards yeah. I, I heard of him. I never, I didn't, I never met him actually. I know of him. Cage. 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 And Hunt Wong Moon. Hunt Wong Moon. Right. That was Ellis Partner. Right. Right. That's the H in Cage. Right. Cage is Kerry and Hunt. Kerry and Hunt. Okay. Never knew that. But I know it now. Yeah. Hunt Wong Moon. Hunt. Kerry. Kerry. Kerry was, he had a, he had owned a, uh, uh, electronic store. Right. On Fed okay. Right? No, Henry Street, sorry. Right? On Wong Moon owned tire dealers. Tire dealers, so, right. Ellis Chowlin, on another story he used to give that Hunt had so much money that Hunt would tell him like a Friday, a feeling they eat a steak and they would go in the airport and fly to Miami and eat a steak and fly back now. <laughs> hmm. I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. Hunt Wong Moon uh, was, um, was 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 how you call him? Eric Williams. Eric Williams, yeah. Um, family, right? Chinese yeah. family, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when, when after the after nineteen seventy, this is I I, I could tell you this because it was told to me, right? Mm -hmm. After nineteen seventy revolution, the black power one thing, um, the Eric Williams wanted to show that he's invested in local. Music, okay, right mm -hmm. now. Eric Williams was a connoisseur of music, right? He, so, so, so it, 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 it was, it, it's not just it, you just trade it out and say it all the things that are replicate your political will, right? It wasn't like that. He wanted to get the music of Trinidad Tobago 
out there, just like how uh, 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 any other music is out there, like how Belafonte got out there, right? With, with Calypso music, he wanted Trinidad music to be out there. That's the theory of Queen. He gave Aunt Wamu and Kerry Richards a $250,000 trust, hmm. right? It, 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 it's not a loan, not, you know. It's, guys, it, get the music. And that's how kids started. You know, okay. that's why people get cage and they, when, when, when I, when I reach in cage, right, I, I was, two people there before me was, um, was, uh, Carl Addison and Wildfire. Right, right, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then after me came, um, Nappy Myers, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, I, I all, uh, and they just sign on, I guess signed the cage, right, to create music and stuff like that, right? And um, during the course of it, Kerry Richards called me in his office and asked me um, if I know about Motown and uh, and Stax Records. Mm-hmm. I said, of course, but I, I only know it from a from a point of view of a, of a, a artist listening to the music and liking the music and playing it, mm-hmm. you know. And Kerry Richards told me, and this is incredible because Kerry Richards said, and and and. His, and his insight at this point in, in time was, was something to be old. He says, all of these record labels have their own studio, mm-hmm. right? And every one of those studios has its particular song, S-O-U-N-D. Mm-hmm. The Motong song, the Stock song, right? And years later, the, the song of Philadelphia, right? Mm-hmm. L.A. song, and New York. Every one of them had their own song. The reason for that, uh, 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 he didn't know. He didn't know the reason. He didn't know the reason. Mm-hmm. He, just, he wanted to create, uh, uh, to get this studio to make money. By the way, you know, the Chinese people, they know about product. They know about industry. They know about selling. Mm-hmm. Right? They know uh, all of VP records. You name it. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. You know those shit, right? And Kerry is the same way. He said, we need a product. And to get the product, we need to attract artists from all over the world to come to the studio and record. So I said, how are you doing that? He said, we need that to get a song. That's a UND, right. right? That is how this whole thing started. They put a budget. They said, we're going to call it the South Caribbean Song Project. South okay. Caribbean Song Project, right? And every time we're doing a, anytime we're doing a South Caribbean Song Project, um, King, uh, uh, product in the, in the studio, whether it be Maria Afonso or whoever, Jerry Souza, mm-hmm. and, and, and it is a book, so it is being built as this project. It'll be, it'll be right down, Eric, Eric Mishra, right down, Soka, S O C A, Soka, right? Okay. South Caribbean, South Caribbean, right? Okay, right? That's what it meant. It's like I'm Sobe, it's South Beach, and right, Soka, right. And and you see, and we were under the impression, uh, well, me, I was a little in my early teens and think that, that it was soul mixed with Calypso, which is S-O, because at the time, as I was telling Beaver, I remember buying 45s, one called Calypso, C-A-L-Y-P-S-O-U-L, and Funkaiso, F-U-N-K-A-I-S-O by Clive Bradley, you know, and everybody was kind of experimenting at the time, you know. Right, Rob, when you see that correct, mm-hmm. everybody was looking for it. I think what, 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 um, how you call him, um, Shorty did. Mm-hmm. And, and Shorty's a whole story by itself, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Short, short, what Shorty, Shorty never called it, um, Soka, you know. S O K A H. Yeah, he called it a, because he wanted to do the same funk calypso and all that kind of thing. Right, and he the first, the calypso. first, the song that is credited as the first soca song was um, "Endless Vibrations," and that made reference to a lot of of um, funky, you know, rock your boat, rock your ship. Um, feel like dynamite. That a lot of soul songs. So we, t- so we thought it was like a fusion of you know. But, but years after I interviewed Shorty and he said no, it was the soul of Calypso where you take the inner the inner beat and bring it out. You know. Yeah, but this 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 soca thing has been a, a, a big debate for a long long time. 
Mm-hmm. And I I know where it started and, and what and what caused that to happen. See, you see, um, well, we need to hear that story. Shorty, Shorty mm-hmm. was a kind of pariah in the studio at the time because Maestro, right, was the, was signed to Case Records, right? So I, I, I don't know if you guys ever heard of Maestro. Of That's course, um, I I I think Maestro. Bionic. I would say Maestro was Bionic. the first. I would say my show was the first ever soca superstar. I, I would say that. that. I would say. I that. agree with that. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, I I'll put him up there. I'll put him up there with um, Shadow. You know. Well, right. Shadow. But Shadow was still in a kind of way under the Calypso thing, up to up to Bassman, where it was um, where the song Bassman was about a bass, and that is how come it ended up having a bass line. But before. Calypso didn't really have a bass line. Eh? It used to, play, used to do the walking bass line thing. What Pelham got at is called chord symbols. You know, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, but, 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 but these guys, mm-hmm. these, Shadow was more talker than all of them, you know, because Shadow was using the correct... And you all know what high life music is, you know? It's right, like yeah, the African, West African music, high life, yeah. That high life was very, very close to soca, Right? The original way we wanted to do soca. Let me tell you something. That was a battle extraordinaire in KH recording. That mm-hmm. was unbelievable, you know. Mm-hmm. If I, you, you, when when Shorty brought out Endless Vibration, Shorty, there's no way in the in the song he mentioned soca, you know. There's no part in the song in the lyric, right? No. Okay. No. Because he could not do it. Because he was uh, if he had done it, he'd have get himself in trouble. Because by this time. Carry done copyright the name Soka. So the name, wait, wait, wait. The name Soka is copyrighted? Copyrighted, right? It had a box. Robin, Robin, let me tell you a, a story of, of how we get a Soka, thing, right? <laughs> hmm. I go in into the, I listen to Steel Band, I listen to Party, and uh, it has this massive bass end that's come out and float, right? When I listen, listen to the love and two rhythm section, you have a man sitting down on one big, big, big bass drum. I don't want to see that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, that, and the whole of the calisthenics rest on this thing, right? But we can't reproduce this in the studio because every time we push to try and get it, okay, and we take the record, we mix it, and we go and, and carry it up to Barbie, just to master, we go, you could master and sure that, right? It's blowing the cutting. <laughs> In Barbados, right? Hmm. And I used to have to walk dollars uh, US, right? So that as we go and we blow the cotton head, right? We hand them the money so they could put in on next cotton head. <laughs> Barbados used to call and say, hey, what, man? When all you're coming up here, make sure they walk with the money for the cotton head, eh? Because you know it's good. <laughs> and I, it, 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 it used to happen over and over, right? Yeah, and, and yeah, yeah. Me, I, the whole used to work with me in the studio was Clive Bradley. God rest his soul, right? Mm-hmm. Now, Clive Bradley was the, you know, like, like I couldn't, I couldn't write for horns, right? Mm-hmm. I write guitar, piano, all this and that. But the horn lines and thing, you need to be able to. So he used to be there in the studio with me. And Clive was the worst because Clive know about about um, the steel band thing, right? The song of the steel band is get right. And I in the studio trying to get this song onto the record, right? So when we mix in a tape, tape, um, um, suppose it was a track tape, then 16 track tape to two track, right? When you mix in it and you tape saturating a little bit, it's fattening up, you take something yeah, nice yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, right? Mm-hmm. So you play that back mm-hmm. and it's good. And Eric Nisha used to say, um, Robin, <laughs> them thing is supposed to be in the red, you know, right? Mm. And it, it, it's like that, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, um, try this about, you do so. We leave that fucking feeder right there. Brados, <laughs> 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 boy. Yeah, boy. Yeah, no. I, don't know. I mean, we, our loan production, Robin and, and Mario, mm-hmm. is, is, is in cage, right? Mm. Because the music writes the song in good, but they didn't have equipment to deal with and, and, and media. The, 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 the musician, the musician take on. That way our producer come in, you know. Uh, so, idea. as a, well as an engineer, engineering geek myself, when you first went there, it was eight track or sixteen track. 
A-Track. A-Track. I will touch on a boogie on A-Track. That is an A-Track, what, one inch, two inch, what it was? Half inch. A half inch A-Track. Okay. Yes, half inch. And like who make, what, you remember the maker of the machine? It's, it's, it's um, I think it's um. Um, Ampex, 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 A-Track, all right, right. okay. Then we, went to Ota- then we went to the Otari, right? Otari 16, no, 16. when I went what? down there, it was, uh, it was not, it wasn't a Otari, yeah. man, the Otari come long after, the Otari was a, was the 24 track, right? Yeah, I, I would, all, all I remember... All I remember is the It was a, uh, what do you call it, man? The, the, what, like what they had in Criteria in New York. What is called that? And there's make a board too. There's make a mixing board and, and a two inch. Um, API? AP, no, not API. Not API. Not API. Uh, uh, um, see, see, Robin, I, I, I would remember like the. Um, less than half a board, less than half one of the board. MCI. 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 That, that is that, what that, it that. was. MCI. Not API. MCI. MCI. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and what I, what I, all I remember is how, as a producer, I go inside. And I, the first thing I got to ask you is how much track do you have? And you tell me eight track. Then I don't know. I do how I'm recording the thing. You know, mm-hmm. uh, the rhythm section first, then the horn section after, and then, and, 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 and then the vocals and overdubbing vocals. You know. And, and then you bounce it down, and then you do yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. I start in the days of 8-track too. I started 8-track. So I know how it goes. <laughs> you see, my, my, my entry into it will be different from yours because you're more technical than me. you like Frank. You know, Frank and you all are the same. Frank, Frank, Frank. Me, I grew up watching you and Frank. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm more technical. I'm a more, I'm a, I'm, I'm a more production engineer. You know, production, you know, mixing board, give me the gun, mix and fail. Right, mm-hmm. uh, but 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 um, uh, th- there'll be technical guys like Frank. Well, I when I was in Charlie's room with Frank, okay, I used to mix. But Frank is the one who come and ask me for Robin, how much bass you're using today, right? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I put in about sixty hertz at three dB on the bass. Okay, okay good. I put in fourteen so far there, right? <laughs> <laughs> <That's> just, <laughs> You know, before Frank used to get mixed because he would put up the PA how we like it and I could mm-hmm. drop all the bottom and Yeah, I remember like, I remember when Taxi, the first gig Taxi ever do in West Small Car Park and you playing guitar on the stage and walk off the stage and come to tell Frank how the PA song is. Come back on the stage Leave me alone. Frank and I go back way, 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 way. Big, big, you know, people yeah. don't know that, right? But, mm. you know, that was the early days. But All basically, right. the student started out in the, to get the soccer song, right? Right. We started out blowing cutting heads in Barbados, right? Then then we started to realize what was happening, right? How to get the bass on. So you got to use a compressor, a UREI compressor, right? And an equalizer. Forget the name of the equalizer. We set it up in a box. And Frank made this box for me. <laughs> so put, I put the, the compressor and the equalizer inside there, right? A parametric equalizer. A SAE. SAE. Equalizer. Oh, okay. Remember that name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. SAE. So I get the bass, the song, right? And it's in this box, right? So anytime you, the, the kick drum comes down to the mixing board, you patch it into the box, out, back into the mixing board, right? And it's it going to tape, it's compressing. So it's hitting the tape. Hard, and yes. Fuck, right? Mm-hmm. So, so that was the song we was getting. When that thing started kicking, so boy. Well, the first, the first man who get get a little taste it was Byron Lee because Byron Lee, well, well, I'm good with, with Ellis, right? right? Ellis Byron Lee, so Byron Lee comes to the studio, they say he hear that, he say he won that, right? Ellis, uh, can you just say, hey, um, you can, you can't be, be sending this out to the studio. You gotta come to the studio. Mm-hmm. And I had to pay twelve hundred US for that box. <laughs> but I just first plug in. <laughs> yeah, I just first plug in if you understand me. Right? So that is the origins of what we call the pong. <laughs> the pong, the yeah. wotong. The pong, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, you know what song is on? I'm tiny whiny. Right, oh, wow. right. You listen to the kick drum on tiny whiny. You hear? Yeah. But less I, than Paul said, tiny whiny is the first ever drum machine song. Yeah, well, 
Well, I, all I get was a, was a, 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 a the truck come down on a multi truck, right? I, mm-hmm, we didn't mm-hmm. record it. Right, you know? right, yeah. We, we just we come down to the You say Errol Wise was supposed to play drums on it, and Errol come too late and they wanted to start, so they, they find this drum machine and put it up. And Errol come and find, ah, I still had to get pay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was, uh, Errol, that story is with Errol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. What do you call him? Oh, you mean uh, Vino? Uh, that's my boy. From up right here in Belmont by me, yeah. yeah. And then Michael, Michael Toby. 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 La, 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 Mm-hmm. Well, uh, but wait, 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 wait. F- finish up the soccer thing. Cause, cause yeah. that, you see that whole that la, 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 thing. That is a whole section we have to do. Yeah. So yeah. let finish off the pong and cage and thing. Another thing about cage too. Cage had a sound because the studio was a RCA design studio, right? And the room had a certain the room had a certain it's reverb. It's a sound cage. Right. Long ago, long ago. Um, uh, uh, Recordings are done, done in song stages, you know. Right. The whole orchestra will be there. Right. My company orchestra. But it's only two tracks. So all mm-hmm. the orchestra in one track and the next microphone is for the singer. Mm-hmm. So you have to have the room. If you want to type of re- reverb and thing, you have to have the room to give it. Right? And this is how this is how the song of Steve started. Because when you when you go to Motong, which, which uh, uh, by the way, Cage... Pay for me to go to Motong, to Muscle Shoals. Why, but, but you had the history, want, boy. The, you had to tell want, me all of that. Soka. They want soca. So I go to Motong, and Motong is a fucking library. <laughs> it's a library, <laughs> right? And, <laughs> and all, all the bookshelves still there. So the room have a song. When you, play, when you hit a snare, it go <laughs> Because it bouncing up around all the, um, the, 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 the shelves. So mm-hmm. it's refractive inside there, right? And they're using that. You know, if you, if you listen to early, not LA Motown, because Motown moved to LA eh? after, but in Detroit, in the early Motown, you hear, you hear it all on the snares and the toms and things, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. That no kick job in the early Motown, only snare and tom, right? That's purposely done to keep the people in, in the states on the white radio station happy because they in the United States that bass and kick drum and, be- and walking bass was African music. Right? So they will take it all and early motor only had back to back to back to back to back all the way in the top of the music. Mm-hmm. And, sing, and no and no scatting, no hi yeah no, no kind of scatting like that. Right? Everything had to be straight up. That's early motor. Right? Yeah, when they say they made it to you, black people only had cheap little sets. So the, 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 the song got right. on them on that cheap set. Yeah, they had, yeah. So that is the studio that they did it that gave that motor on that particular song. And then when I went to Marshall Shoals now, with, where, where, this is in Atlanta, with, um, with, um, they, they, they were a bunker, a concrete bunker. Right and and inside the the building um the studios there's a, there's actually two rooms right it's real isolated right that's Muscle yeah. Shoals Muscle Shoals in Alabama Alabama yeah Muscle Shoals Alabama yeah that's yeah Atlanta, Alabama mm-hmm. right and they 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 um this, this is where I get the most input onto what they have a nice you, documentary on Muscle Shoals you could get on on Netflix. Yeah, I, I show it. I show it in class also mm-hmm. in my class because we go we do the history of recording, huh? Eh? But here, here, here's the thing with Muscle Shoals and Trinidad Tobago. I went there because of a fellow called Graham Goddard. Graham Goddard was uh, um, Byron Lee's engineer, a, a white Australian guy, right? And he uh, was the agent for that scene, not API, MP, MCI, mm-hmm. boards, right? And Muscle Shoals was now in, installing the new Neve and removing the MCI, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, at, so it, all, all, all I was going there because of cage. They were doing double duty now, right? Because they wanted to the, the, the limit to the studio. He always in, to install it. And when they installed the, um, the board there, the musicians there who are on by now, very famous, all... Rolling Stones and Sting and Wilson Pickett mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. 
the young world, all them recording Martin Souls, right? Okay? And the sound of the room, that the nine foot grand, grand Yamaha, drums in a boot. That's the first time I ever see drums was in a boot. Mm -hmm. Before that, drums were set in a room down by KH, right? And it's the, it's the same way down in Mouton. Drums are always set out in the main studio. So you used to get the, um, the, the reverb of the studio, right? But with the, in the booth now, you can literally tailor make the song of how you want the drums to sound and so forth. Mm -hmm. But the guy told me, um, um, uh, um, Robin, his name is um, Robin something or something Robin. Mm -hmm. One is the bassist. Right, okay. and he told me that the main reason um, song band um, shows like Bhutan and stuff and, and most shows happen is because one, they have a consistent room song, and two, they have a consistent musician. Mm -hmm. Right, they have a rhythm section, a bassist, a guitarist, a drummer, and a keyboardist, and they're always working together. Mm -hmm. Anybody come there, they're going to use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Motong had the it. funk brothers, right? Yeah, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I go back to that now, right? And I tell, I tell him, Kerry, I say, Kerry, here we are. One, you got to get better speakers for the studio. Because them thing you have inside there is, is, is called um, is Altec Big Red. Big Red, yeah. The Big Red monitor. Yeah, the Big Red, right? Uh, Cat TV base. And two, you got to hire a studio group. And if that be hire... Airway, Angus Moon, David Bootman, myself, and a, 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 one other person, or Beaver. Beaver was in that. But Beaver ended up working in SEM Studios, mm -hmm. right? And that and SEM and Cage is going back and all in you know, old studio fighting studios, mm -hmm. right? And that's how, that is, that is how the soccer song started. We started to create, anybody come there, that is the crew that's going to do a song for you, right? And, this is, and, 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 and they must get publishing of his song. They can't always used to take publishing of his song. And that is what caused, um, how do you call them, uh, Shorty and Cage to fall off. Because Shorty, although Shorty was not an artist in Cage, he always wanted to be an artist. And, uh, but, he was, but he used to do the music for my show, right? So right. he used to do the music for my show, eh? Mm -hmm. So my show, so, and, and my show... Um, once I have my show, they, they, they say, we don't need to sign Shorty. We have, we have my show. Then my show come on dead. Right? Yeah. So this is what happened. And this is why now, it, it, um, what do you call them? Shorty said, look, he signed me. He say, and he said, we will sign you, but all the music had to be published by us. And Shorty said, I don't want that. Now, hear this. I have a story about Shorty and Cage, right? Which was told to me by one Ellis Chowlin on deceased, right? Mm. Um, I wanted to find out about... I was told that um, Mr. Chris Blackwell was in Trinidad from what I learned after he was, um, what we just say, tracking a, a, a BV stewardess. And, and he came into Cage and Shorty was there. And like he was listening to a little bit of the thing and then he came to, to Shorty and said um, something to the fact, well, boy, if I want some of this, how much, where you going to take? And Shorty said something like, Shorty, he said, Shorty, tell him to talk to me, it had to start at $50,000 or something like that. At, at which point he said, he, say, uh, he turned around and walked out of the studio, um, Chris Blackwell. And let's say he fly to, to, to Miami or wherever to talk to him, and, but he never came back. Is, is any of you ever heard that story? Is that? Absolutely, that really happened. Shorty was an arrogant kind of guy. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's two sides to this story, guys. Right? You have to remember, at this point in time, there was a, was a, 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 a black consciousness that was going on in Trinidad. Right, right. Post-1970. Post post right, right, yeah. Right, good. Mm -hmm. So... Chris Blackwell, although he's a Jamaican by birth and everything, right, mm -hmm. was getting a problem to be signing these artists. I and mean, he got real problems to sign, to sign um, Mali, eh? Mm -hmm. Mali, right? But he eventually got to a look at what, I mean, the, the rest is history. But that was the problem he was going through. Chris Blackwell, when I, when I released La 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 TTT, that was signed by, um, by Columbia Records. By, um, Col Casablanca. Casablanca Records, uh -huh, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. He called me and faxed me home, faxed me a whole big contract to sign because he wanted me publishing 
and kids tell him no. You know? I, I, oh, I, so I, I, you I, were under a publishing contract with Cage? Inevitably, eventually, right? Mm. Eventually, yes. But 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 that but that um that fell apart when Cage fell apart. What was the name of the publishing company? Um, is it a Cage publisher? I forget the name. Uh, they, they 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 um. I can't remember the name of it. It wasn't KH Publishing. All right, okay. All right, all right. No problem. We're going to look back on some more record and see. It's like Malimba, Kalimba, something like that. Kalimba, something like that. Kalinda? I know there was a label called Kalinda. That, that, they had their own publishing company, too. Okay. All right. So, there are two people in KH Records that are fighting all the time for publishing. KH, which is Kerry Richard, mm-hmm. and the father, Kerry Richard's father, Richie, Richie Records. Right, both of them always fighting to get publishing, right? And all of them, every time an artist in a studio doing a recording, you will see both of them inside, they saying, I want that boy. I want that boy. I'm going to pay this. I'm going to pay that. It, it used to be a joke inside the studio. Right? Because Trinidad was not really hip to what publishing was at the time, right? Right, yeah. It was really, really, really new, mm-hmm. you know? And that was the back and out with the Sweet Soccer song. Sweet Soccer song, anyway. Where want me to go from from from, I want, from the uh, Well we had to hear about Sweet Soka song eh? because the whole idea behind this podcast is we want to figure out why it is um that we are so called make it. Right? Um and you didn't make it, you say? We want to figure out yeah, Well, we ain't had nothing in the top ten on the billboard charts and all them things. Like where there's <laughs> what they just call make it. I I what I mean I don't mean success. Success is what could be whatever it is, right? But what I'm saying is is that um you were one of the people who actually was on major label, um you had the best players you had you had everything. I want why it didn't cross we just know this all right then Mario took a song. Um give us some history about that first because let's build up to it. Um w- was it was it before Shorty um and this vibration or after? Yeah I I start, when I first went a cage my mm-hmm. first song that I recorded was she took a song. I, uh, but but what we were doing was uh, uh, we were trying to create this this South Caribbean song project, right? But was, so it would be it, it because they use the word soca, so it was before endless vibration. Who you know, Shorty uh, making the claim for soca, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, that, that, but that, so you actually have a song out named Sweet Soca Song before actually Shorty came on the scene to pronounce. Um, yeah, that, that's correct. Right, okay. That's I correct. just want to make you sure. Want to explain that. that to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shorty wanted to get signed with the studio. He wanted to get that box. You see the box that we have, the, 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 the plug in box to the thing? Yeah. But the only way to get that was to sign with, with KS Records, right? But he didn't want to sign. So what he is doing is that he will go and ask Eric. You'll hire Eric to record it, and you'll hire um, Airwise to record, right? Taking that, if you put the music, the song together, and the engineer, you have it. But Eric cannot use that box. <laughs> it's, not only, it's, not only, it's not only the box, eh? right? That is the box it's Frank a, put together? Yeah! All right, I'm going to ask Frank. I'm going to ask Frank about that box, but I'm curious. Robin, guys. The box is nothing. The, all the boxes are equalizing a compressor, right? Right, but if it's something that, that, that everybody was after, it had to have something right. about it. Right, because, because, <laughs> because, because the song coming out of cage, right? I mean, Eddie Grant and everybody coming to the to, 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 to trigger because they want our song. All right, right. well, okay. So that's a simple, well, simple thing. Then it's something, uh, something, it's so something we have to explore. But all right, mm-hmm. no, we ain't talking that now. La da da ti ti ti. So, 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 no, no, we're talking about, uh, uh, right, okay, good. Mm-hmm. So, why? Uh, 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 so, yeah, so, sh- so Shorty wanted the musicians and the box, but what? he didn't want to sign. He, he, get, he get the musicians. Right. He get the musicians, he get the engineer, he pay for the studio. In other words, if he, 
was assigned artist, right? Mm -hmm. and, and his publishing goes go to Cage, right? right? He would get everything, including the book. <laughs> 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 but he sort of wanted to sign the, uh, the publisher, right? Mm. That he come and he, uh, and, and he hire all the musicians, hire them and pay them, eh? Prime, mm. right? Hire studio time and thing. So much so that while he recording that album, Terry Richards coming inside and making sure that you take the box and you lock it in your drawer <laughs> and all kind of bacchanal is going on, eh? This is no joke, eh? <laughs> right? Mm. So the record come out now and he and, and, and this man doing a review, um, uh, Ivo Ferreira. Right. Ivo Ferreira. And Ivo Ferreira called it Soka. S-O-C-A. Mm -hmm. Because Ivo... Always in the studio, I was all always writing about the Soka project and all this kind of things are going on in case and make the fucking mess. <laughs> and the article says called Soka, right? And here yeah, now, man, this band had a backtrack and talk about Shorty. He said, No, 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 this is Soka, Soul Calypso, the Soul of Calypso, S O K H, and all kind of things. Right. Because if you only say that was Soka, right? And he said that, they are fucking cause to sue, I'll sue him, eh? For copywriting. That was how bad it was there. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. All right. Okay. That's how bad it was there. Right. So, so right. that, 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 that situation, uh, do you know that Shorty on his third album eventually gets to use the box? <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the word soca. <laughs> and the word soca because by that time, Cage was gone too. You understand? So that was the end of that. You know what I mean? The carry gone, the... Uh, Hong Kong Moon died, you know, Ellis lived long before, you know. Right, right. But that was the era that caused the Bacchanal and so forth. So, so, you know, to, to say Toka is not really any particular type of rhythm or, or genre or to, to us. The people who see the Soka was a way to record Calypso so they could hear everything clearly, right? You know, mm -hmm. the bass that that come from Trinidad and Tobago, the snares, um, the, the, the bass guitar, right? It was had their own space and thing before you listen to old time recordings or colors. So it's a big jumble, right? Mm. And just I said blah, 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 brass and vocals. Everything else is just jumbled up in the back. And we started to separate things, find the correct snares for it, the meters to put it in, you know. That is what Soka was about. So when people ask me if Sparrow is a soccer man. Well, I have plenty of records that we record for guns with Sparrow that had the soccer trimmings in it and thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So, 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 so yeah, yeah, that is how we, the, this big argument that we get all the time about um, soccer, right, is laughable to me, huh? I said, I want to think it about it, I say, because you don't, you don't find out about soccer, ask a DJ. A DJ will do some put on a record, bam! When you see that soca, that Calypso record start to make the people jump up, die soca. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't put in, you'll see Miss Mary, boom, boom. But you can't do that, you know. You gotta to put in a, 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 a soca song, you know. <laughs> right? Then you see people that are going on. Right. That was, it was a recording phenomenon. It, 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 whatever, by the way, that translated into live music. Um, it, at least that is my opinion. Huh? Just a quick question. So, <laughs> will you class La 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 TTT as a Soka song because of the name Sweet Soka song? And the next question, would a tourist, you know, them tourists could now jump up to Calypso? Could they have danced to La 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 TTT? I know they used to sing it, but I'm not sure if they could have danced it. I thought that, right. Nice, 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 nice. In hmm. UTT, Dr. Liverpool, um, 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 Chalk does. Does a thing called the history of Calypso, right? And he has um, a recording of, of, of people of, of a, a American ethnomusicologist um, saying what the dance of Calypso is. And this, this, um, this, this musicologist took a, 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 a film of people on the street on Juve in Trinidad in the 1950-something. And all they hear in the recording is, is people feet going tch, 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 on the pavement, mm. right? And he 
stood up in the recording and showed how true he is dance to Calypso. And he just started sliding his feet back and forth <laughs> on the floor. That is the, the, that, that is the cook recording. Right, right. Mm, yeah, the right. Cook record. Yeah, yeah. So, he, mm. so the people in the world felt that the way the dance Calypso is just shuffle the feet back and forth. Right? Up comes R&B and then disco and four four timing, right? And people developing music of the one, two, three, four, like two, pa, two, pa, dancing on it, right? This is what we did with Soka. This is what Soka did. Soka take original Calypso. Soka is not just a boxer, my brother, or Mario. It's not just mm -hmm. a boxing studio. That's one party. The other part is, <laughs> is, is, is the dissection of the Calypso beat. Well, original Calypso... Right, music, yes, yes, that is the important thing. Let me hear about that. Yeah, the original Calypso music, the bottom was... was, was right? right? It was on and a syncopated off. On and a syncopated off. You cannot dance for that. Forget it. You can't. Well, we used to dance to it. Hmm. Well, because, because we are sure that there's an overdeveloped sense of rhythm. So the on beat is in our mind. mind. And we born with that. It's in the DNA, right? We, that's why we can listen to color, like steel bands. Even a foreigner knows here in steel bands, but that's just annoying. I, I, how many times in your life have you heard people say, I don't understand steel bands, it's so noisy, right? Mm -hmm. We can hear the music in the steel band, Okay. It's the same thing with the rhythm. When I hear me, tuk, tuk, I don't put my one, two, three in the mind. I know it is. But popular music. So Calypso music. was on what? One and... No, uh, the, the, one cut, and. the cut time. Cut time. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's one well, explain, and. explain cut time. Cut time is if you have four to four straight. A straight time is one, two, three, four. Cut time is one and two and three, three and, and four. four. All right. Okay. Right. Good. Mm -hmm. So, so normally, um, most in music, it's called four on the floor, means four kick drum. Four kick floor. drum. Pop, 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 pop. Yeah. Right. Pop, 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 pop. That's four on the floor. No, but, four uh, on the floor is not pop, 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 pop. Yeah. Yeah, but the snare is playing mm -hmm. the, uh, the augmented note on top of the bone on the floor, right? So you right. go jump, jump, jump. Right, because they used to say funk is on the one, like James Young used to have everything boom, pop, tuk, 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 yeah. boom, right? That, that all, was that all, funk. All, 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 and then they say that the, the disco people sell out by just going poop, 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 instead of going boom. Uh, <laughs> well, well, I've well, heard that well, them well, arguments, that, right? Well, uh, disco, disco have, have its own problems. <laughs> Right, this goes are black music and and it is selling, selling, selling and then the white people burn down all the disco records in our stadium, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Of people remember that. Oh, fella. Is, that's a famous thing. Huh? Fella in Chicago, it, yeah, yeah. Some Chicago right? DJ. Because, because, because disco killed rock and roll. Rock music went out because disco was in. Just go cross the board. Yeah. Okay. I, was, I was in school in the yeah. States when all that happened, when they blow up the yeah. records and all that foolishness. And men in the, yeah. all them white people thing was against disco and all them kinds of right, things. Right, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I remember that. Um, yeah, yeah, group, yeah, groups like Tavares and all these real badass groups singing, playing disco, right? And, and, and you're wondering how come they're burning the record in the stadium. Is that is that scene going on? Mm -hmm. right? Anyway, so, so, all right. Now, here, yeah, right. So, this is the important thing. Mario, you good? I want to ask a question. Um, well, he still didn't finish the. Well, you know, right. A lot well, yeah, let him finish. Thing, right. um, when it when it could have dance crossover for for a white audience. La 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 right, good. La 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 I wasn't playing it cut time. I go right? Written on the four four time because that's where I'm going with it. I want people to dance this, right? Okay. I write it in the studio, write four guitars, two 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 guitars per time, right? Down down the middle. Um, um, I have no drum in it yet. I just use the mouth on the on the thing going like that on the tape. 
So we bring in um, uh, Toby Tobias. Toby Tobias was the first call drummer in case students before Aaron White. Eh? Toby was the man, right? When Toby came in, Toby put the one set of calypso, right, on the song. So I tell Toby, I said, Toby, you're going on, but um, he won't fall on the floor, straight up floor. He said, man, I got to be again, you know. You know, I only play calypso. Now, where in the fucking world <laughs> you could hear, uh, uh, you hire a man for an exception, and he's telling you he playing what he wants. But that was the state of affairs in, in, in cage and in Trinidad at the time. Mm. Every individual is, is an entity unto themselves. Toby say, I play who I want, baseman play, you know? But thank God that Angus Noons and, and, get, get, and, and bass, right, and David Bookman and Keys. So we got, and, and I called Beaver. Be, 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 uh, no, Beaver was a Keys record. Um, Sam. Uh, Sam at this time, right? And then one Beaver to do this session. Right? So we came in at an ambidite session with Eric, right? Record the piano, right? And then go. So we had we had the thing done. But no drum track. In fact, we leave whatever Toby put on it. The, the, the argument we shall say is we are right, Toby, whatever, whatever. Right? Mm. And it's stay. Right? And then when they buy the record from, from Cage Records, um Alan Douglas and then from, from uh Electric Lady, the first thing they do in the state. They put a, a, a drummer called Bernard Purdy. Eh, Bernard Pretty Purdy play on La 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 Titi? That drum you hear in there, the Purdy Shuffle. The Purdy Shuffle, boy. Mm. What the hell? Right. I, I never Bernard. know all of that, man. Right, right. Oh, so gosh. Purdy, right? So when I reach up great to Bernard Purdy, boy. When I reach up to the studio now with, with Bradley, right? Bradley and I reached the electric lady, but Bradley high out of his mind. Like, that's, like he, he, he high from his steps at the plane. <laughs> <laughs> right? When he reached there, right? And I hear the track, I went mad. I said, who's the other one? And he's like a hero to me. Right? I hear him about my life, right? Mm -hmm. and then on top of that, Bradley come now, and Bradley write out the brass line and it, right? Now, when he write it, and the, the fellas just, the brassman just in the studio practicing. They take his sheet and he write. Bradley can't believe that is what he writes. Because what is happening here now is these brass men are playing correct intonation, correct measure and thing, right? But Bradley now, for the first time, he, it, I don't even know how, I, I, I don't want to, 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 to short sell Trinity and Brassman, right? Mm -hmm. But they but, but but they can't play as good guys, I'm telling you. The, when Bradley hear that boy, Bradley started he, he had simpler things because he writes for like a the Trinity and Brassman in mind, right? Mm -hmm. When he hear all the real things, he re re write it right there in the, in the studio, you know, right? For them to play over. Right? And ba -ba 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 -ba, all them things that they can't give a Trinity then to play. And you used I think you used the the best session men in New York, um it's Brecker Brothers right. and thing play on that, right? Um, I, I, I don't, I'm not too sure. You know who will know more about that? John Faddis and them. I know. Uh, yeah. Uh, they, they, no, not David. Michael. Michael will know more. All right. Okay. Michael, Michael used to live up in our studio. Right? I just, I, I just, I could not believe my ears. And then, then here you have here, 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 big thing, right? Now, if you ever go to Electric Clear, you shall feel this door as a bucket list in your life because it's still there. It's like a museum now, right? Yeah. You go... It, it, it's good. It, have, it has floors, you know. Every floor is a different right. studio, mm -hmm. right? I never floors. go in. I went outside of it by the 8th Street Playhouse in Greenwich Village. I went, yeah, I went. You're right. You're right, right. yeah, 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 yeah. But, but it, it, you see, you know, my, Robin, I'm from Tuna Puna, eh? <laughs> so, okay. I electric lady studios, right? Mm -hmm. I feel, I, like, I, I feel like I've gone to Mecca or something, you know. Mm -hmm. the people, you get, you had Jimmy Hendrix picture there, boy. Yeah, well, Jimmy, Jimmy Hendrix is who built the studio. Is who was the first owner. Studio. Yeah, it was his studio. Yeah. So, yeah. so I go in there, right? And, and every artist have a tendency in, 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 in that studio. Like if you're on a session and downstairs, you'll go upstairs and listen to the session and, and do a cameo on that session and so forth and so forth. 
And this is how I end up having Donna Summer, right? But Donna Summer wasn't big at the time. Not, she wasn't big yet. Donna Summer and, 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 and two other girls that were there, right? One of them left when Donna Summer came, and they were singing. They were singing the background vocals for La La TV. Oh, so they were singing. Oh. <laughs> I, I write it La Da Da TV, right? And the reason I write it was because I think that whole wall, the other thing, documentary wall, there's a kind of song by the song called La La, mm-hmm. right? La 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 La. Mm-hmm. That was to be road march that year. Every band, everybody, in band, DJ, everybody played, right? And Eric would just make a call and say, no to be going in with any road march. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, no, I'm just, that was the decision, you know, then. No, and, and, and here this, uh, I went by Rocky McCall in that time. When, when, when I was in Chandelier, you were doing two albums called Chandelier So 1 and Chandelier So 2. The two albums, right? With a, a, a medley of Calypso, right? And we couldn't get, um, we couldn't get the words from Mama Luka Bubude because Mama Luka Bubude was never recorded. Right on, on on vinyl. So when I go by Rocky McCollin, Rocky McCollin have a recording of it on a on a on a, 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 a real to real tape mm. that he stand up in front of the tent and tape um how you call him melody singing it right. Mm. Mama look up, boo boo, day shock right. So we get our words from that right. And while we are there, you have a draw called road marches that that also ran a draw full of road marches that couldn't be road march. Because of some political reason, like um, like tourist Lego, right? right? Right, I remember that. They change they they they, they change the rules to say only a Trinidadian could win road match with two when tourist Lego was supposed. I remember that. I remember that hmm. well. You have a draw, you know. It's not not. I only had no two, right? At my age, right? But you have a draw full of them. All the political reasons. And ramifications. Mm-hmm, anyway, mm-hmm. that's how I knew about. Uh, but uh, an important uh, thing I need to know: how you managed to sign with Col- with Casablanca Records? Good, how good, how good, that good, deal good. come about? Okay, good, good, good. Uh, not first of all, it was Alan Douglas. He was the owner of of um of uh, the manager of uh, Electric Lady. He had his own label, mm-hmm. right? So he he doing a tour of the Caribbean, looking for talent. Okay, so he came to KH Records, and Kerry Richards knew that he was coming. So they put together a two-inch tape, not two-inch tape, uh, 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 the Fat Master tape now, mm-hmm. Fat Master tape, right? Of me, Eric Carl Allison, Wildfire, Nappy Myers, right? All of you on a, a, a demo tape. So Alan Douglas sit down in the studio. And they play all the records. My one was the last one we gave. And the reason for that was, La La TT wasn't finished. All I had was one verse and a chorus. I didn't finish the song, right? Because I'm uh, doing other projects all the time. I didn't other productions in case, right? So I didn't get a chance to do my own. When the, last, when the, when the song played the last one, I don't know say I want that one. And Kerry Richards said, when that is finished, he said, I will finish it. And that's how it gets time. Hmm. They just hear the song and they like it, right? And that's why I had to go up to New York and do all the vocal on it and the background vocals had to change. Well, the, the reason the back, I had put la da da, I had written it initially as la 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 tiki tiki, yeah? but then this big controversial la la song with Nelson that year, uh, I said, now let me change them words to la da da, so that people will see a tiki Nelson song, you know? That's mm-hmm. all, you know. When I reach up there and, and the girls try to sing it, uh, as you can realize from a musical standpoint, la da da is a hard thing to sing, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and, and and Donald Trump say, uh, yeah, well, let me change it to let's try la la, and 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 then and then the, the man who is doing this session producing this session is Giorgio Moroder. Oh, Have you ever heard of this guy? Giorgio yeah. Moroder produced that song. Yes. La 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 ti ti ti. Time now, la 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 ti. If he get signed to Casablanca, right? Mm-hmm. This is how it's going. You see, you see how it works in the business, right? Yeah, they yeah. have these producers that come through the whole Caribbean or go in Africa, go, in, go in South America, or whatever, and find artists, sign them, and then 
present that to a bigger label because they'll have bigger distribution, right? Mm-hmm. And then sell them our prices. That is how the music business working, mm-hmm. right? So I get signed to the to 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 to, to, to Casablanca, and they are the one financing the um the background vocals mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the studio yeah. and all this kind of thing, right? So Maruda is saying to me that uh, you can't change the lyrics because they are, they get permission from the writer. I tell George Maruda, but I'm a writer, right? And I have to sign a document saying that is, I give myself permission to change the lyrics of my own song to sing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know that? So that is how that, that whole thing came about. Let me tell you something now. That song was so much. You know, I, I, I mean, today, I look back on it, 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 go, it, it changed everything in China. That's how we do things, you know? Right? When the amount of money that KH gets for my song, they buy a new mixing board, and they're bringing two new speakers called two Super Red, mm-hmm. right? All new mm-hmm. outboard equipment and all this kind of thing. That is, that is just for that side. Then the flip side of that song was called um, Clapping Soka. I don't know if you want to hear that. Yeah, yeah. Like it kind of, mm. Clap your hands to the Soka song. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No that ended up in a movie called The World of All the Gap. Right, <laughs> yes, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, it, so it is going... Your problem with uh, to answer um, the question, why why do you get all these big signings or whatever? There's no follow up. There's no follow through. When right, you, that when, is when that, you, that is the, the point. You see, all right. Now, David Rudder was signed to London Records. Marshall was signed to Atlantic. Whoever, whoever, and like some, you would expect something to break through. Right, but you know, David found that London made a whole lot of mistakes. Um, yeah, so you all were Casablanca. Casablanca was big. Casablanca had Parliament Funkadelic, they had the very Donna village Summer boys. Village, yeah, they had, yeah, village people, yeah, right, yeah, they were like very, very big. Um, yeah, so and they and and they bought it. So, what did they send it to radio? And what, what, what happened? Why, why? Why you don't think it made the, uh, the, the Billboard I, Top 40? Uh, uh, I, I, anything... All right, now remember, Mike, uh, uh, Robin and, and, and Mario. Mm-hmm. I was the artist here, okay? Mm-hmm, I, I, mm-hmm. I, 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 I am not... I, I write in the song. And if a producer tell me... If, I'm a concert, if Robin comes and say, Robin, I need something for this demographic, Right? I was studying demographic, and I will go for it. But nobody knew what it was. They just hear this song. It come like a novelty song, like a like like a one time song, you know, like those a one one hit wonder kind of thing, where it played on an American bandstand, and they can't pronounce the word so couple of play soccer song, you know. Oh, it played on American bandstand. It played American band time. Okay. It's a, it's well, wow. It's a mm-hmm. distribution route. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. That that is where you need somebody like a like a Chris Blackwell, right? Mm-hmm. Who, who 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 could get because publishing is the name of the game, you know, or distribution and publishing, right? You know? Uh, if I and, and, and the first thing Blackwell will tell you is like he wants five or six songs. You know? Yeah. yeah. So that when yeah, so they can have something to push right after, right? Mm-hmm. I write that, um, how do you call it? Um, clapping Soka. Clapping Soka, writing. When, when, um, that is, that is the follow up to, to, to see Soka's song. Mm-hmm. When Cage, all the, all the, everybody fired in Cage. The record plan closed down. The only place running is the, is the recording studio. Kerry, Kerry Richard's gone, Ellis gone, on what moon dead. And they want, a follow up to Sweet Soka song. The, the studio, um, Casablanca, right? And I inside that studio, me, Eric Michel, and Clyde Bradley, three of us alone, right? And we record Clapping Soka. That drums you hear in that song, right? It's me alone with that kick drum on, on, on a microphone kicking in the studio, right? And then, and then the snare is when Clyde come and put the snare on after. All the background vocals is me and Clyde Bradley. That is it. That is, that is, there was no. 
Dan kan ze zeuren die, 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 die mood of die, die status of it, right? You know, when you want to have a song, you have to have a hit song or that breaks you. You have to have 15, 16 songs in the pike, ready to go, you know? To follow through so the marketing can take a hold of it and push it all over. Right? All right. So uh, why would you say that the music on a whole, not just your thing, the whole uh-huh. Trinidad music, why we never crack that whole billboard and all that bacchanal and sell million copies and all them trimmings, what people is always talk about, about so-called making it in the business. Why that never happened? Because our target was never that. We were never into mass market. We tend to be very insular in how we do our music. You know, we aim it for what? 30,000 people who buy records in Trinidad, if that much, right? Or download. We aim it to go in this party or that party. Okay? We never sit down and say, okay, this is the market out there. What's selling? Like BTS, the Korean group right now, right? Mm-hmm. And the Korea invest money, right, in this thing, right? And uh, Yeah, but those places have those places have critical mass, eh? What I'm saying is... Not, uh, okay, how about Jamaica? Jamaica make it, do you think? Well, yeah, the Jamaican, the Jamaica diaspora, yeah. No, 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 Jamaica, Jamaica forever, it's an American champ, maybe small. Okay. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. Um, but what I'm saying is the, the Jamaican diaspora all in England and all in everything... They, they, they would buy the music. I mean, if a record company wants to take a chance on something, and he realized within, within the own, within, within like the local market, he could at least cover his money. He would be willing to make take a chance. But um, I remember when I had a launch at my record company years ago. Somebody, um, I think somebody was after Anselm Douglas. He was singing, "Everybody jump right." And then they, when they found out how much it sold, they say they never saw anybody cause such hysteria and sell so little pieces of 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 product. You know, right, right. Because we servicing we servicing carnivals. That's what we doing. We need Trinidad. Look at look. All right, let me show a perfect example of what a publicist a publisher does. When Chris Blackwell launched with um. Bob Marley, mm-hmm. right? And he started placing him in all these different places on there, right? It was only white people following Bob Marley. It is unbelievable. Bob Marley himself can't, could understand why every concert he goes to sell out concert, but only a of white people is it. So much so, so much so that he actually opted to be the opening act for the temptation to get himself in front of a black audience, right? Because his, I, I, can you imagine what the Temptations and the Supremes and the Jackson 5 and all of them were yearning to do, get into, the, get into a mainstream white audience, because all the numbers there, right, to sell a record, right? He had to literally go open up to get himself in front of black audience, in front of a Temptation thing, right? Did mm-hmm. Bob Marley on the, on his, by himself, has, uh, has launched the, the Jamaican um, music industry. Think about it. Men like uh, like 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 Shaba or uh, other. There is white audience know these guys. You know, you know. Yeah, the diaspora, my brother. Of course, the diaspora. But brother, that whole thing with Jamaica, Alganja, that thing. That right. Massive. Mm-hmm. Massive. Ice green and gold. Right. Dread, ice cream and gold, dreadlocks and marijuana. That soul reggae, basically. Right, right. right. I, 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 island people. That, that, that is helped. Even Rihanna, that is helped. Even that. That, 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 that island ethos. It's like Rihanna in our music. You know, Rihanna is not considered a black American. I mean, Rihanna is considered like a Mali, you know, like a, a island person. Like, 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 uh-huh. like, okay. like Nicki Minaj and... Caribbean, Caribbean. So, that means that, 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 
شده در از آلو بین تو انتلا در هفتی میوزیک در هفتی میوزیک نو با وی نید تو بی گایز این از جس بای اپنیان نو دس از نوت دس از نوت ویل یو کوالیفاید یو کوالیفاید در هفتی اپنیان وی نید تو ستارت پوتن آل سیلز آل در از خو وی آر I mean, our productions need to step up. We need to do, we need to, to, to watch, um, do some, do the due diligence, watch charts, understand what is happening, do the music going out there, right? And don't be afraid to be yourself. Go outside and do it. It'll, it'll happen. <laughs> uh, Lord, I don't understand. I'm too old now for this boy. The thing here is I asked everybody about the remixes. Ask Robin about it now and see what he think. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Well, I always look at La La La, TTT, you know. Um, would, I don't feel the need a remix, though. I just feel the need mastering, remastering, because the, the elements are there. You know, and the feel of the music is there, you know. But it just probably need a little remastering somehow, probably putting a more modern day drum, but not too much of a remix, yeah, because the, the music is there. Um, actually, the same partner, Eddie, was asking about that. He, I mean, and, and DJs want to play the song, but probably they just need a little, um, as I say, remastered a little more, you know. Same feel, though, because you can go and remix it and you will lose the feel. In the, in okay. the remixing, you know, so, but so in the end. I'm going to answer that question for you, right? Yeah. When I go to the mix, I, first of all, I didn't do the mix at all, huh? Mm-hmm. I don't, from the time I finished singing that record, it was out of my hands. Everything was Casablanca, right? The problem with that, I find, it gives it too much of a, a AM radio mix, a yeah. A-weighted mix, right? No top end, no bottom end, right? So, so, so you're getting this kind of low mid finish on it, right? Yeah. And, This and, and and strange thing about it, boy, out of Casablanca is getting all those full full end mixes from from um, Parliament and uh, 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 and Donald Trump. How come we then then give it that that, that treatment on um, on La 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 TTT? And the reason for that simply is that they wanted to go for white audiences, so AM radio, incredible as it sounds, right? Now, when you hear it on our AM radio, it's it's not good, right? When you put it on an FM station or or, or even a a DJ set, it's lacking. Lacking, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, lacking. Many times they call me Rod Sinto, uh, who's the original, they call call them line producers. Every producer of a line guy will go to, will stay in Trinidad or stay in Antigua or whatever, and produce the song and then bring you chat, right? And he uh, he always called me, right? To, 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 to say, let's let's do a remix of it. The thing about it, the tape got burnt up in KH, you know. Ooh. That was the problem with it. Right? right? To the original, to do a remix properly, you need to get the the sixteen track, you know, and mm-hmm. and you pull out all the parts and you put it back in, you know. You know, whatever was good to say, you know, you have modern technology. Well, um, as I was trying to explain, <laughs> from a sound engineering point of view, there there's two types of remix. You can take the sixteen track tape and mix and remix the tracks that are there. But when people like Ma- when a DJ like Mario speak, remix usually mean that you know you take the vocals or you just take the rhythm and you add something and you put in a little more this or a heavier snare or, or actually kind of reproduce the song you know oh. when they call that is what the djs are called remix right what what we song engineers are called remixes when you put the original tape back on and mix it no no that could be possible in a mario that could be possible <laughs> but i <laughs> I own the publishing to the song now. So. Uh-huh, okay. <laughs> but but the song still has some potential. I mean, but but what I wanted to know is whether, um, let's say, a mainstream audience, the same thing they were geared up at, were they able to dance to that song? Or did it have that calypso beat that they couldn't be in the, the rhythm no, of the song? No, it, 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 it was straight up. The, 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 you see them dancing the, at the time in, in, mm-hmm. on, on American bass dance. They had this kind of, Nothing from nothing means that kind of dance. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. 
So they can People do are doing that in the soundtrack. Yeah, but they produce it as a kind of light sound in truth for, 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 uh, for the white kind of audience. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, a sunshine song, you know, summertime. Napier, when Napier, right. when Napier, exactly. Right. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, a, like a summer song. Right. You know, like it, 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 it wasn't street. Right, yeah, nah. yeah. That's what you wanted it to be. You wanted it to be. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Why not? Right? I only right, yeah, up. yeah. But, but, uh, but guys, is a lesson learned. I mean, I make some money. I get about 24,000 US for, 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 for it. And you fool is something, you know? Mm-hmm. That's the biggest money I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> At the time. Right. <laughs> right? You know? Then I know you went away and you was a kind of big PA guy and all them kind of things, you know. I, 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 you know, Robin, you know the strange thing about it is, boy. Yeah. I was never a PA man, I was a songwriter and a musician, but I had to get into this thing out of this shit because it, it, there was a demand, you know. When I do Jackson Five, right? I, I do, I'm the engineer for Jackson Five, sure, you know, mm-hmm. right? And when, 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 when you're doing it, right? I had to go and rent. PA system from all the bands in Trinidad, right? And put it together in the, in the Savannah. It wasn't right? Edgar Foon? Do, no, I, I, Edgar, that, that was before Edgar. No, 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 Edgar Foon was on the show, mm-hmm. right? The, the show was brought in by, by um, Spectacular Forum, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Claude and, and Frank Martino, right? Yeah, I went to the show. So they come to Cage, you know, and they say they're bringing it in. And you know why they come to Cage? It's because the Prime Minister involved with it. <laughs> right? So Cage drives, right, right? Good. So we're going, all right. You know, Chinese connection, right? Say no more. So they come and they say, ask me if I could put a PA system together. I had lots of her. I had, I had a pair of Altex, right? And an and a acoustic mixing board. It was a 12 channel mixing board with three monitors in it. That is what we use in the Jackson show, you know. Twelve channels and three monitors and three. Right? Mm. And to get the PA together, I had to go by air I go all down in Shagwana by, by those Indian people that they saw PA system and things like this was good for um for Indian wedding and things. Yeah, and man, and FM uh, songs. <laughs> yeah. FM <laughs> I went all the song to, uh, to, 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 to the production song. I don't even know what DJ called. Um, joy, 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 joy production, joy, joy, joy production, joy production. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I, mean, I get, I get, I get bass from him, right? And I put the whole thing together. And I asked Edgar, I said, Edgar, I want, to, I want you to build a little, uh, a, a small mixing board so I could plug all the speakers into, it. so I could just get two coming to the mixing board. And he built this little thing with, with the, so you, you, you build a, a, a panel that all the speakers could plug into, right? And we put it up in the, in, 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 in the um, Savannah. When Marlon, when the Jackson 5 come to, 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 to sound check, and they see the PA system, here's the first thing they do. Marlon Jackson comes to me and says, what is that? <laughs> no, I thought he joking, eh? Right? I thought he trying to fuck me up, you know, <laughs> you know, like, you know. He really didn't know what that was, you know. <laughs> because they're not accustomed playing on our big piece of song. You see, this is the thing with black artists at that time in the 1970s, right? They weren't allowed to play in the big hall and so forth, right? So they Jackson only... 5? Jackson, Jackson 5 was five big. Was not that time. Not that time. Like, this is, this is, this is, Jackson 5 became so big right, that people don't realize all them artists, Commodore, um, uh, Jackson Five, uh, Cool and the Gang, all of them had come inside there, Martin no bring. Coming inside there because Jackson Five, when they play on the PA system and they hear all the songs, they, they talk with back to the stage, they had to come to Trinidad, but you're getting concert, concert venues to play in. Concert venues, being like a radio city or something like that, that Jackson is not, not playing in yet, right? But these bands would come to, to Martino. Martino would get them at a cut price or a summer price. I get all these big groups to come because they want to play on big PA in Toronto and Tobago. So this is how I get into this PA business in the room. <laughs> I, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was um, someone trying to make a point about Toronto, the first um, Miss World, Miss Universe 
boot block the TV pools, right? Mm. And that Chung Rad could do this, right? And then this massive piece of some of this beautiful content. Uh, two days. Hear this now. That was... A, 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 look, when I when, when the show starts, the first day, the two days, eh? when the first show starts, I am um, mixing Rose on stage. She's the opening act. Rose singing. And I have I give her a microphone, the best microphone we have, which at the time was one of the old shows with a switch on it. Unidine. The silver Unidine. one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm going down, I'm going down, blah, 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 blah. and she switched off the microphone. Why is she singing, right? Yeah. So all the end is... All the end is... And I put a piece of tape on that, boy. Look, look, look. When you reach that stage, you have to be like, you have to be learning more than this. Of course, after that, right? And then, mm-hmm. then, then you design the microphone, start to make the microphone with a little clip on the switch. Wait, right, right. Yeah, you could, right, right. 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 So, so, right. The, so the switch can't yeah. switch off, right? Right, so that wasn't so yet. You need dying and you need sphere. <laughs> so she's singing, saying she's turn off the microphone, right? Mm. And when uh, when um, the microphone go off, boy, on the mixing board, uh, and the grandstand mixing it, and the only pelting cork, 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 and copper thing on me, right? Yeah. When it did, you back and out, and yeah, boy. that guy was fooling in front of the up so like a like a peacock. When he, when he cork, cork, said the pelt, boy. I want to duck and go on on the chair thing with yeah. Carl Lapperta, right? At the same time, she takes the microphone and she throw it on the stage. Oh, she fed up. As it, as it hit the stage moment, the microphone come on. <laughs> Bam! Yeah, boy. Oh, gosh. <laughs> We're here now, man. Yeah, yeah boy. <laughs> Song people as Galix. From, for everybody else, mistakes. Tell me about it. I know about that. That is the story of my life. Oh, I, I remember you catching your ass in the studio uh, in a set, in a, um, what do you call it, uh, in a show, running cable, kicking people in, <laughs> they don't really care. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, oh, we pay the price. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, all right, so it's getting late and I want Maria to reach home before the curfew. All right? <laughs> I don't want to have to go and bail him out nowhere and help him pay no $10,000. So, <laughs> so, um, so, so, um, so just moving forward, what we have to do now to make sure the music... Oh, no, wait, just one question. All right, yeah, let Mario ask no, you No, Robin, when I listened to a lot of your music over the years, there was a lot of... Let's just say it was a time when you could experiment a lot in the music, you know, you, you would do Calypso. Actually, a soca would sound different if you, if you listen to songs like Johnny and... You know, it's on on um, French tax, um, Frenchman, and stuff like that. So there was a lot of experiment in the music, and I could see that he was trying to get the music to another level, probably to hit the Billboard, which was probably the ultimate goal. You know, um, and it was different to the Calypsonian way of doing music from a DJ perspective. You know, they they had that yeah, your, your drum machine seemed to be different. Things seem to be a lot different, right? Um, coming back to the, the question with, with Robin, where he head in anyway, is um, what what you think could be done now? Because it, it was really an exciting time, your time, when you would, you know, it, it, you, you can't be considered only a soca artist. You're an all wrong artist doing everything in the music, right? That's what makes it interesting. Nowadays, you know, you know we, we don't have that, but I ain't seen that from artists. We only have, you either come into one category, soca, and that is it. Or Calypso, mm. right? Mm. So moving forward, what suggestions you have? You know, because your time was really exciting. <laughs> and now we only gain one thing. <clears throat> um, oh, God, Mario, <laughs> that is, what, that, you know, okay. mm-hmm. our focus years ago mm-hmm. to make money out of music, right? Mm-hmm. And to make money out of music meant that you had to sell records. Right. To sell records you have to be in the standard to get into the to get into the um party. You have to have certain levels of, of music, certain levels of recording, certain levels of lyrics, certain right. So you have to push for that because to sell records, you cannot depend on selling records in Trinidad. 
to be gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you understand? Yeah. So, uh, that is what drove us. You know, that was just what we experimented on different ways to record so that people could understand what we were saying and what we were doing. And when you so when you put it up against a Madonna or whoever, mm-hmm. we, we, we could say something, right? I think music has, what has happened to that is that they have forgotten about that. They more to the next Suka Monarch or the next Road March and then, then, and then and do some concerts in the diaspora and come back home, right? There is no, the musicians themselves are not being driven by record sales, you see? Yeah. They are driven by getting, that, getting putting out a record, uh, trying to get out of the Suka Monarch and win a prize, or, 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 or do a tour and make some money and come back home. That is what is happening here, yeah. right? They drive to, with, the, with, with the advent of KH Records, right? They drive to sell internationally. It's gone. We don't want to sell. We, 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 we settle right now to, within our diaspora, right? Artists do not depend on record sales or downloads so far living, you know. You know? Right, Whereas right, right. Attila Swift, right? The whole, the whole, whole tone is glanny up. You know, a concert deal is glanny up. Right, right. We, we used to say that. We used to say that um, people used to go, people outside used to go on tour to promote the record. And we used to make a record to promote the tour. <laughs> you know? Exactly so, Robin. Yeah, yeah. You know. I, 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 let me tell you something, guys. It is hard to bust through in our market. Eh? Mm-hmm. It is mm-hmm. hard. Because we would say about I, Caribbean song basin. They had the kind of capital like when they first started, like um, or maybe even more than Cage, and and they had a focus. That is all they used to talk about: Billboard chart and this, 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 and I, that, I and that, and you, but, but, and. and so why why that why you think that didn't come true as well? Uh, um, I think again, we, 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 okay. What will make an artist happen? How come they didn't have no cage records behind Bob Marley, or they didn't have no Bob, um, Caribbean or behind Bob Marley, right? It was what a music publisher. This is Chris Blackwell. Mm. Right. Also, oh, we needed a Blackwell figure here. Or yeah, oh, 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 many of them, you know, because we have plenty of music here, you know. A plenty of good writers and good things, right? It's mm-hmm. just that they're not writing. A good writer. All right, let's say like showing. Is it showing, boy? You want to think, um, um, uh, when I wake up this morning, you're a winner. Uh huh. Um, that is um, voice or one of them fellas. Um, voice, but, but the rhythm that they're using. Uh huh. Um, voice. Where's the boy from? He living in Canada, right? Um, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, um, yeah. But these Co- are. Cohen Dubois. Cohen Dubois, right. beautiful writer. Mm-hmm. Right? Even the one he did the other day with, um, with this girl from Tobago, right? I love this music, boy, you know? You know? Uh, who, 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 um, who guaranteed you tomorrow? Who guaranteed you tomorrow? Right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Right? We, these, these so-called groovy soca is some beautiful songs. We have really except good one, songs. Except the ones that we to make it out Right, there. yes, yes, no. Ones, look at the songs. But, but, have... but you see, those guys writing, and then thinking about, just tell a writer, right, where you want your music to go. And he will go. And if you write it, I know where to go. You go just you looking right down the road. Where you can make our money? For the dad. Right inside there for carnival. And get a few parties, boom, 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 like everything right. If you tell that writer, listen, I am going to put you out there, you're gonna sell so much downloads, whatever, whatever. They will go for it. But there's no there's no nothing there. It no, but I understand what right, Kenny Phillips mm-hmm. was saying, and and saying they saying that the son and them making serious money outside, off of downloads and thing, you know, he say a yeah. lot more than than we ever made back in the day selling records and thing. That's what he say. I don't know how true. I not in the business really again, you know. 
how, 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 how would you expect in, to, in this day and age? You all have heard of the, the K-pop, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, right? You know how big these guys are, man. I mean, Mario should know this, you know. This mm. K-pop is a big, big, big deal, you know. And they, and, they, and, and, and they, have, they have the method, right? And, it, and it's like a commodity in Korea. Mm -hmm. they, they could, you know, I, I Trinidad don't have that talent. Trinidad mm. have that talent, boy. But they could sell millions in Korea self, eh? They ain't had to... You know, they're selling all around the world, but, but, you know, but we, as I was saying, we ain't had the critical mass, you know, like he ma, a fella ransom in Africa, he might have been able to sell so much in Nigeria because they had the population, you know, but, so we had to look, we had to come up with a different strategy. Right. But I think the song's good enough, eh? Just we had to find a way to get it out there. And, and Absolutely, Robin. Mm -hmm. Bring the production of the song. Mm -hmm. Bring the distribution of the mark, publishing, and keep go oh, look. Abba, uh, Abba, the big series group, bam, the series go and say, wait a second. We have money in this point, here we go do. We put in a publishing school and, and instruments in every high school in Sweden. Right? The number one writers in the world today, from Rihanna go back, is from Sweden. Them writing mm -hmm. from, that was the thing, you could write, right? So, oh, come on, man. We, Trinidad, as I told you in the beginning of this tour, all through the Caribbean, they always used to say Trinidad are the best musicians. No, that don't ever translate into anything? I don't know. Well, I don't know. Uh, you tell me. I, 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 you know, you <laughs> asked me a question there, Mario, right? Mm -hmm. And all I could give you is, um, is, a, is a kind of dark answer, right? But, but, this year has shown that without increasing the market for, for the artist, you will not create a cultural move into making sure that there's something massive in the world of music. Eh? Because you have to increase the market. You have, because you only have 30,000 people. You can't, you can't, you have to, you have to tell yourself, okay, where is it? And you move the market out, you know? Yeah. That, that's just my thought. But they don't know how to move the market out. That's the main thing. They have they these songs. They don't, they don't, they, they, because they never knew. Uh, in our country that, mm -hmm. make, that, that, that live their whole life with their wealth coming out the ground. So they feel that guys, they never have to sell nothing in their life to survive. You understand? So you, you, you know, tell them, man, you know something, music, publishing, that's like talking Greek to them. Mm -hmm. You know, they... they, 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 they uh, uh, Robert, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, boy. All right. So, Mario, we good? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you have any other questions, ask him, you know. No, nah, thank you for the contribution. Um, because, you know, we, we learn to appreciate it more as time goes on. And I think maybe others will appreciate it more. Because when you, you look back at your repertoire, you would see so many different types of music. And that is something that we could really appreciate. You know, so thank you for the, the, the thank you, thank you so much, guys. This is yeah. very important what you're doing here. Very, very, very important. important. Yeah. yeah, this is the history. Because, this is the history of Trinidad and Tobago we are discussing here. Absolutely, and we are right. very lacking in, in, in documenting things that have right. Well, yeah, let me try and yeah. same way we same way we ha we make mistakes in the past, and we need to do we need to do this too. <laughs> All right. Yes. All right. Yes. So, Robin. Robin. Lord Father, we knew it was good, right? Stay blessed. All right, stay blessed, man, Robin. Yeah. Yeah, Thanks, Amil. All right. right. Until. Yeah. Yeah. Until.